Oh. Hey, yeah, everybody. Leopold's ass. And, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still working I on things, but apparently we're live, so you can all hear us. Or you can all see us. You couldn't hear us. Hey, we're just I'm just finalizing something here, so let's chat. How's everybody? Yeah, we have no sound. I, I found that out the hard way. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sunday night. We're playing some Zweihander, and... Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just figuring some stuff out here. So, uh, hey, why don't you uh, throw out some questions and talk to us while I do that? <laughs> or you guys can promote your stuff. Why don't we do that? Oak, what do you got going on? And and tell everybody who your character is, because these are these are OG characters. These are these are the characters that started the original channel. It was the first game we streamed. Yep. It was the first characters we played on the channel. These guys are the real deal. Madness, uh, oh jeez. Uh, Edmund Randolph, he's a, a smuggler turned charlatan. Uh, he's a fat boy, but uh, he's quite sneaky. Uh, that's who I'm playing. Uh, I got my Twitch channel I'm trying to do, Twitch T slash Urians. I haven't done shit the last two weeks because every game that I've got going through the week has been canceled two weeks in a row. So I'm hoping to have something going tomorrow morning, but that's about it at the moment. Yeah, until those guys get more dedicated. <laughs> he just ignores me. All right. Uh, <laughs> did you say who you're playing? Edmund? Yeah. yeah, you did. Boom. Overlay set up. Uh, except for me. I don't matter. Um, who's below you? Who's to the left of you? Mike, you got anything going on you want to promote? Who, me? Yeah, you. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just here for the ride with the world's best DM. Oh, get out of here. I'm not DMing tonight. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, bro. I'm just a player. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Uh, I was say that first. Thanks, Mike. Stole my joke. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Bill, it, it's, you got this anything, is a you got rough anything system. going on that you want to plug? Nope. I know Leland does. Leland, uh, you got, I'm you sorry, got I'm a just new gig to plug. adjusting this new character sheet. I'm almost done, actually. That's fine. We're doing the intros. It's all He's, good. He's plugging numbers into his character sheet. He didn't got time so for, to plug anything else. Twenty people can see part of my background. If you want to know what that is, that is in the corner, it's that's Battle Cat's butt. It's I got a He-Man and Battle Cat as my background. Nice. Uh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Leland, what do you got going on? And who are you <sighs> playing? Oh, Hold okay. on. Okay. Okay. okay, I'll tell you who I'm playing first. Um, <clears throat> I'm playing. I'm playing uh, Vinswick Blood Jinx. The gnome racketeer turned politician. <laughs> so basically just going to be a little asshole gnome um, who is running for office uh, eventually once he can settle down. He's trying to build up some campaign funds by, a run, by a, you know, doing whatever the hell he is doing <laughs> at right. the start of this adventure I know nothing about. But uh, uh, he's... Uh, like a husky, crooked tooth, little ugly guy, um, aristocratic, ha walks around with a, a gym scepter. Um, anyway, uh, as far as what I'm got going on, uh, it's probably, this is going to take a minute. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I won't go too long, but uh, anyway, I just started working with this, um, podcast slash whatever actual play i don't even know the terms um um they're they are on youtube twitch and facebook they're called audio dungeon uh they're pretty awesome like the the beginning like 30 minutes of the stream is like a little a mini game session which is pretty cool they do like rp D, D themed mini games and then the last uh you know portion at two hours or so is um you know is their actual campaign which they're currently in hell, so that just tells you where that's going. Um, they seem like a very cool bu bunch of people based in New York City. They play on Wednesdays at um, 7.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, cool. So check that out on all three of those platforms where you can check out actual plays and stuff. Also, um, I'm going to be playing in a Zweihander game uh, next third, this coming up Thursday with a tabletop to keyboard at 9 p.m. Central. Uh, that's gonna be cool. We've got a crew of people for that. We're playing a homebrew horror, uh, an ongoing horror adventure called Terror and Tree Fell. 
um, playing a, another kind of social character in that one, Elvin Fop. That was going to be fun. Um, other than that, I, I work for Zombie Orpheus. Check out their Twitch channel and their YouTube. They have lots of films, uh, lots of actual plays on Twitch, all sorts of stuff. Tons of nerdy content. And you can find me, Leopold the Just, on a bunch of places. All right. Sorry, I'm done. Cool. Cool. Um, I skip. I skip these guys doing their character intros, but I'll come back to them. GN, do you want to do your character intro? And you got anything you want to plug? Uh, I will be playing the ever awesome and vigilant and melancholy Kalia uh, Barsh Barshfin, the dwarf who was a pit fighter slave who is now. Uh, he's not exactly free. He still has the brand on his face, and he is. Uh, Working as an executioner now, which seems very fitting. That's and that's the second uh, profession you took, executioner. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm just trying trying not to pick my nose on camera. That's all. <laughs> oh, whatever. Hey, Voodoo Lou, welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before, so it's nice of you to join us. I like the name. Uh, let's jump back to Ruby, aka Mike. Mike, why don't you do an intro of who Ruby is? Yeah, okay. So Ruby is a, a halfling. She's lowborn, and she's a bit of a uh, perfectionist when it comes to fighting. Hot-headed, tends to like to settle disagreements with her steel, specifically her court sword. She uh, fights um, – bit of, she's a bit of a, a fop uh, herself, and uh, but she's you know very uh, agile and uh, likes to uh, stir things up. She sure does. All right. Last but not least, that leaves Erg Singe Belch. I've just got him as Erg on there. So I will be playing our very awkward Dunderhead caster who tends to say inappropriate things and get everybody in trouble. Um, he is he was recently a astronomer, which is one of the few magic uh, classes to start with in this game. And he just graduated into Pyromancer, meaning... His hair is now going red, and after he says something stupid, he'll be getting angry very quickly. So that'll be great for everybody, and I'm sure Mike will uh, enjoy having Erg ruin all of his plans. Oh, yeah. No, this is perfect. Good times. <laughs> all right, so that is the gang. That is the crew. Tonight, and for the rest of October, we're going to be playing a adventure path um, known as the In-Between. It's written by Sean Van Dam of the community. It's part of the community content available on drive through rpg for zweihander specifically uh it is available right now we're playing episode one tonight called or entitled quoteth the raven so it's october so we got to do some some spooky stuff right so what better than to get back to zweihander and get the get the band back together right yes the old crew all right oh it's so good to have you guys back Okay, so if we've got no other housekeeping items, then we should just jump on in, shouldn't we? Oh, I'm going to boot up some music here. Oh, my sound just went horrible. Bear with me. All right, my sound is back. Can you guys hear music playing? spooky eerie music you all know how to adjust it on your end if it's too loud or if it's too quiet i don't hear oh it's just it's just like ambiance kind of you know what it helps if i'm on the table music is it coming through the roll 20 table well it's 20 yes 20 Ah. it's very very low and subtle and unsettling it's definitely unsettling (laughs) i like it for our spooky setting. I don't know how loud it is coming across on the um, people in the stream. My phone is not muted. Shut up. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> we're going to mute my phone right now. That's what we're doing. Go away. All right. So the five of you have been. Oh, excellent. Thanks, guys. Chat just confirmed they can hear it. So you guys have been traveling recently with the gentleman by the name of Durant. I don't know how or where you guys picked up Vins, but somewhere somewhere along the way you've picked up Vins. Uh, possibly he was 
hired by Durant as well, and is just along for this job. So you're getting to know Vins, uh, or Vinswick as part of this. But you guys have been on the road for the last three days. You've been hired by a man named Durant. Uh, he's hired you for protection as he travels between Mullinsburg and Fuchstad. The whole time you've known him and been on the road, he's been clutching this box that's been tied around his arm. He's just, he's been holding it almost like a newborn, clutching it nice and close to his chest the whole time. And whenever you ask him what is in that box, he does not reveal what he's carrying. He just reminds you that you are here to protect him. He's a rather crass man. He likes to curse. Uh, he's very blunt and very forward in his, uh, in his demeanor. The three days you've been on the road have been very uneventful. And if the gods are good, the next ten days will be the same. The road to Fuchstad has been getting more dangerous since the war started. But with changing the seasons, even the brigands don't want to be out reaving. You guys have stopped for the night. After a long day of travel, you're sitting around the fire. The fire's warm, it's crackling as you all sit around. Durant is cradling the small wooden box while he gnaws on a leg of rabbit. And shadows dance and leap around, rolling off of everybody's faces. It's the perfect kind of night to be on the road. You guys are sitting there and you're making small talk with one another. Yeah. There's a big, giant, ancient willow tree to the back of where you guys have decided to make camp. And it's just swaying and creaking in the wind. And you can, you can hear, like, squawking and chirping coming from nearby. It's sliding in and out of the shadows like sands on a beach, this big, giant old willow. And uh, Durant, he's taking a bite of his rabbit, and he kind of stops and looks at the group, and he goes, oh, fucking creepy it is. And pulls the box closer to him, and keeps his eyes and looks over at the willow tree um everybody here can make me a standard awareness test where well, you glance bit, over at, at the old willow tree it is a bit eerie oh crit success two crit successes look at us starting off the night we're getting the good rolls out of the way early yeah when do, uh, what did, did you say awareness? Yeah, standard awareness test. Did my music stop? It did. I gotta loop it. Max. Okay, people in the chat can see its name. Yeah, I don't know spooky. why that says. Oh, I got it. I got it. What do you? What says what? But it says okay. Max Steel. Wrong game. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> oh yeah, Max Steel. It's just his name in Roll Twenty. That's fine. I fixed it. So you guys glance over the tree, and every once in a while, the the firelight flickers. And you can see through the darkness. You, you make out that there's, oh, roughly like two dozen ravens in the tree. And they're bouncing from branch to branch, and they're flapping their wings, and they're squawking and flittering about. They, they, they refuse to stand still. Um, who got my critical successes here? Max, uh, Max, I don't Edmund. Think. Ruby, <laughs> Ruby and Edmund. I am looking at your name and calling you Max. Ruby and Edmund both got critical successes. The two of you make out in the middle of the flock. At first, you see this pair of yellow eyes that kind of light up and glow in the firelight. And you, you look closer and you see that they belong to a white raven sitting in the middle of the flock. How far? Oh, the tree is like 20 feet away from you. But these things are all over the tree. They're all over the branches. But the this white raven is just sitting in the... the it's sitting there, and all the other ravens are cawing and jumping between branches all around it, and they're all Ruby wrestling. leaps up and says, what wizardry is this? Draws her throwing knives ravens. and whips them at the at the white <laughs> raven. Okay. Um, so, Ruby... So, the two people who saw it, and now she's made everybody else aware of, of it as well. You all whip around and... You notice this white raven. You can all make me an easy folklore test upon this discovery. A white raven, cries Durant, and spits out his rabbit. Uh, 
I forgot to hit easy, but I believe I still would have passed. Sorry. Yeah, you would have passed. Easy folklore. So, Vins, you you know that being watched by a flock of ravens is always an ill omen. But furthermore, a white raven is a sign of approaching death. So what? You, you uh, do not want to anger the gods even more, do you? What? You, you're what, what, slaying a very important omen here. Oh no no no! R- R- Ruby doesn't stop to talk about things. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, you moron! What, what, what is that? It, what is it? Um, challenging to hit the raven, or yeah? So what, you what, you want to whip a dagger at the raven, right? In the dark, it's going to be arduous. In the dark, a small target. Okay. It's going to be an arduous. I, simple I would rage. like to prod him with my scepter, like <laughs> her. Her. So her. Hey, Ruby, inter- Ruby is a her. I'm a lady. I'm so, sorry, sorry, my bad. A, a small uh, female halfling. Okay, I yeah. would like to prod her with my with my scepter to try and interrupt her throw a bit. Except that you didn't know he was doing that first. Yeah, I was. She she had. She initiative. just jumps up and. Oh shoot, my bad. Tosses a dagger into the darkness. And, and as she says that, she says, "What wizardry is this?" Here's her roll. Here's where you need a one. Oh, we got. How did I do? I think I did pretty well. Negative 30? Yeah, a roll of eight. Yeah, he passed. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, That's Ruby for you. I'm, I'm putting your fortune down on the table. Let's not forget that you have, like six, old times. you have six fortune. Um, two, three, four, five. Do you guys remember what you used fortune on? No? We'll finish this and we'll get to it. It's been a long time since we played Zweihander this group. Um, so you throw the dagger through the darkness right at where the white raven is sitting but before you do so or before it hits its target the white raven seems to vanish in thin air into almost a mist and the dagger boom slams into the willow tree and all the the ravens are ah, rah, 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 crowing and flittering about and making a hell of a racket what witchery is this We heard you say that we'll go. Yeah, you said that already. All right, so. It was a white raven, it's all. With that out of the way, do you guys remember what what, uh, fortune points do? Do I need to remind you, or are you good? Yeah, they let Uh, you screw us over later. Fortune points let you re-roll a failed skill uh, skill test. You have to take the second result, even if it's a failure. You gain additional AP in combat, uh, attack point in combat, and you can also treat a d6 as a 6 uh, on the face of it for a chaos or fury die when you're rolling your damage. And They get injuries. better as the session goes on when Matt doesn't have a chance to use them against us. So when you spend them, they come misfortune points, and I get to use them for the exact same thing. So there's a little recap on Zweihander and how that aspect works. Zweihander! <laughs> um, so back to the action. So you whip your dagger into the darkness, and they all start fluttering about and you notice that a mist is actually gathering around your camp. And it's really thick. You're looking around. You're kind of sizing up the area. And it's it's thick. You're, you're, you're starting to be able to unsee or not be able to see the trees around you. And uh, Durant goes, oh, I don't like this one bit. We should, uh, we should be moving on. Do we need a torch? Yes. Grab a torch. Can't see anything through this damned mist. Hey, might be careful telling him to make fire. Yeah. <laughs> you guys look around and you see the road that you came in on or the path that you guys came in on to form your camp has actually completely been engulfed by the mist. You can no longer tell where the road begins or ends in this little clearing that you're in. This seems familiar. As you're looking around, the uh, the raven, the white raven flies out from the direction of the tree. The one, and, the one that uh, I hit. The one that you you hit. And uh, lands on the uh, the log that you're sitting on, Barsh. Lands next to you, and it's looking at you all inquisitively. It's tilting its head back and forth and kind of hopping around. Um, I'm going to uh, move away from it. Sure, I'm going to like push my... Mor- I'm not going to try to attack it, but I'm going to uh, push my Morgan Stern... Uh, close to it to kind of shoo it off. Yeah, you 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 push your Morgan Stern towards it, and you try to shoot off, and it kind of just scutters as it like 
flaps its wings and just kind of backs up and it's staring at you. And as it's staring at you, it suddenly starts to morph. It turns from a, a white raven to a pale old woman in a feathery white hooded cloak. The witch! witch. Your eyes. It's a vampire! Uh, the witch. Thank you for the follow, Detailer RPG. Very much appreciated. I'm going to get all of you guys to make me a standard resolve test for potentially taking some mental peril upon witnessing this. I have a talent for that. Of course you do. Oh, I, I rolled easy on accident, but I'm pretty sure I have a talent. Well, re-roll. Remember the rule, if you roll... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, the rule. Been so long. Was... Where, do you, uh, where, where do you roll that from on the character sheet? Your resolve? It's yeah. a skill. Yeah. It's a skill. It's um, power. Got it. Uh, standard? Standard, yeah. You're a little freaked out. You guys have seen some things in your time. All right, who did not pass? Edmund did not. Everybody else passed their roll? I think so. Yeah. Um, uh, I failed. Vins did not. I would like to use a fortune to reroll. All right. The first misfortune. I'm start using those up. Boom. It's a skull now. It's mine. Ooh, even I... worse. Just to remember the game here, Matt, I rolled a 11 and it was under. That is a critical, That's a critical success. success. That's doubles mad. doubles are crit fails and crit successes in this as a reminder as well, guys. So if you get doubles and it's it under your target number, it's critical success. If you get doubles and it's over your target number, critical failure. I know it's been a really long time since we've this group has played Swyhander. Yeah. Um, failed both. Okay, so oh. those who failed take eight points of peril oh so where is that on your thresholds does that go over your first uh your first number on the threshold i won all right so that means you're moving down the track by one so you're on in peril, um, in peril. so you're not getting any I, i'm not minus sorry minus. i just unsure how that works so what, what's your what's your track what's your peril threshold of 9 15 21 you're fine. 27 Okay. Eight is underneath your first number, so you don't take any damage. You're shaking. You're kind of like, oh, you got a little bit of cold sweats. So you're <laughs> looking around, and you're a little embarrassed by your reaction. But you're, you're you know, it didn't, it didn't hit you mentally. Ah, uh, it's because my willpower is high. Uh, but Edmund, it definitely shook you. It switch, switch, kill him, calm down, down. calm down. Drank us what in the blazes. And this, this old, pale woman looks at the group of you, and she, she speaks. She says, You have entered a dangerous place, mortals. The dark musician has already started playing, gathering his audience. Be gone, witch. Dark musician. What's he play? What? what just curious. Yeah, she doesn't really, like answer you she just kind of stands there and speaks in in riddles like there. she says the musician has started playing the reaper is ahead of you his followers are behind the mist and nothingness live where you once were reapers everywhere i go uh, burn this witch down as she's is speaking it... you notice that the mist is getting thicker and thicker and you can this... hear the sound of howling and baying animals within the darkness around the camp. I'm swinging she again, at her. She reiterates, big animals or little animals? Big, big. They sound like big, <laughs> snarling, <laughs> so growling. Not, not, not squirrels. Coming. And she reiterates, the dark musician is ahead. Where, where can we I'd run? like to uh, cast a spell here, Matt. So, suddenly, sure. Uh, suddenly, you see that uh, as she's saying that, and she, she points ahead. And where she points, the mist starts to break slightly. And it, it, it opens up a small path, and suddenly a spectral force or weight starts leaving bloody footprints on the path, leading away from your camp. Some sort of invisible person. Going away from us? Yes, moving away from the camp, to, leading down this path that has just opened up. Did if you have any expertise or knowledge of some sort of spectral magic like this... 
Well, I'm holding a flaming sword over my head. Okay. <laughs> we got Hellboy That's... here. Um, okay, That's you've got a flaming sword. Uh, so she's standing there, and as she says this, the, 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 the baying and the snarling gets louder and louder. I'm going to just start. Um, yeah. um, maybe we should go down this path. It seems to be leading us. Well, Much we'll, better than we'll this situation. That. We might get eaten by these animals. I'd rather How take my chances with the animals. How deep are we into the woods? Well, when you entered, you were just off of the uh, off of the road, but now you have no idea where you are. I'm gonna, is the woman still there? She is standing there, but suddenly, as the howling and screaming, you know, his screaming and wailing coming from the mist gets louder and louder. The forest erupts, and out jumps these large almost like wolf-like beasts, but they're like bastardizations, demonic glowing eyes and long tongues coming out of their mouths, and they jump into the camp, drool dripping from their jaws, burning as it hits the ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to book it down that path. <laughs> My little gonna, legs are trucking. We're going to beast me, boys. <laughs> we're we're going to enter initiative. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> we should have went down the path, you guys. <laughs> we would have been fine. <laughs> Damn it, guys. Uh, let me grab your tokens and bring you over. And we will we will do this. Do you guys remember how initiative works? You should have nope. a button. Nope. nope. I don't remember how anything wagon? works. <laughs> it's been a while. It's I forget. I forget initiative, too. And I've played this like five times. All right. You should all have tokens. I changed some of your tokens just because I am going to show the battle map on stream. And I don't want to use copyright images. So some of you have images uh, from the book. If you're wondering why your images have changed. Uh, uh, Ergs has not changed because his wife drew his character picture. So he owns that. And Edmunds uh, cool. is a really old image that I'm sure is not. Is, which is probably public domain. Uh, well, if he, my token I'll find something public domain. I just didn't think we would be doing that. Which is why I just went with something else. All right. but so I just I'll find something. Up. So we've got, the, we've got the camp. We've got a... Uh, a large man there that's representing Durant, and we've got uh, five of these, like, hellish beasts that have jumped out. Ruby was up in the tree getting her knife. I typed it in, but I didn't call it out, so... She, you, she scuttled up a tree? Oh, well, the tree, you see, is on the other side of these wolves. So, you guys were sitting at the camp here, and the wolves were in the tree behind at the far end of the camp. Is Where's that my wagon? Oh yeah, your wife. Sure, your wagon's there. <laughs> was this the was this the right spot for Ruby to get her um, knife? No, right here. It's uh, it's behind these behind these these wolf things. Uh, so how far would that be? Is it off the map? It's off the map, and you'd have to go through the wolves. Well, but no, she was doing it before. But that's fine. Well, well they were she... they were baying in the darkness there, so you'd still have to go through them. They were in yep. the mist surrounding the camp. Okay, no worries. Uh, let me add y'all to turn order. Where is initiative on the sheet? Oh, I see. The initiative bonus, but is there a button to roll? That's always the question. Is there no button for it? I don't uh, see it. Needs to be added. Okay. Very good. You just turn on all tabs. It's right below all your uh, main you stuff. Yeah, I, I see initiative and no button for it. Right. Where is it? If you turn on, you got uh, encumbrance all? initiative movement. It's right after all your fellowship skills. Yeah. If you have all tabs showing, so what ah. you do is you you roll a d10 and you add your initiative bonus onto that. So you guys can all do that now. You all have access and control over your tokens. I tied it to your character sheets. Feel free to fill it in on the turn tracker for me. No. Nice. I, do. I don't no. have mine filled out yet, just from moving my sheet over. So let's go ahead and roll these guys. Three these guys. plus your PB. Your PB. They get 2d10 to determine. Oh, it's plus, your P it's plus your PB. Okay. Yeah, don't yeah, sell yourself plus. short. So it's t it would be 10 plus, um, what's the three. PB? Three plus Perception PB bonus is your plus initiative three. score. Ooh. Do you roll a d10? Yeah, D10, D10 plus. plus, yep. So my plus. PB was four, and I rolled a, and I rolled a, so I got plus seven to my D10. 
Okay, my my agility is six. My bonus is that what I added to? No, your perception. Uh, perception. Ah, sorry. Five. Okay, so five plus three is eight. So yeah. it, uh, and ten is eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead, fill it in for me. On the turn tracker, please. I like my token. My sound buggered up again. Okay, so top of the turn order, Ruby Goodchild, you're sitting there, and uh, five of these hellish hounds have jumped through the mist. Okay. On shot first. Yes. Oh, sorry, Edmund, you get to go first. I forgot about that. So. You guys remember that? I can use a perilous stun on this, can't I? Yeah, it's like a it's like a free turn, isn't it? At the very beginning of combat. Yeah, I get three action points for yeah. on shot first. Sure it is when combat begins, you gain three AP that must be used immediately at the top of the initiative order, even if you were surprised once fit, determine your place in the initiative ladder and take your turn normally. If more than two smugglers, blah blah. So So yeah, just to remind the players and people here who are viewing. Uh, we have a smuggler on our team, and they have an ability at the very top of the turn order or in combat, like only the first round. They just get a free round on top of whatever they do later. They get two rounds the first round, or yeah, two attack rounds the first round of combat. Okay, so I can use a perilous stunt, correct? You sure can. You've got three AP. Do what okay, you will. Okay, well, now that I'm a charlatan, I'm going to use my confidence trick, Look at these and guys. I'm going to do dirty tricks. And when I use dirty tricks... Uh, first off, with my confidence thing, I may flip the results to succeed on a guile test. Uh, when I do succeed, it is considered critical. Furthermore, I can influence a number of people with the guile skill equal to my fellowship bonus times three. This includes using dirty tricks during combat. Did we just play, did we just switch into Pathfinder? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> So I'll make a guile well, test. Welcome to uh, your second profession. <laughs> All right, have a good night, Jeff. Thanks for dropping by for a bit. Ooh, do you want to spend I'm, a fortune point? I'm going to spend a point. Use one of your tokens. I'm re-rolling that. All right, and this is uh, make a guile test. Foe must resist with awareness or be blinded. I'm going to look up my awareness. That would be shit. I still feel because that's a 46 because I flipped to uh, succeed. Oh, just. So that's. Right. So that's I wanted one, to blind all those. That's one AP. So you got two AP left. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, and we can do one movement, attack. one attack, and one perilous or special. Yeah, like I'm just doing a, a range attack at that one. Sure. <laughs> with my hunting bow i rolled terrible for their initiative but better than vins and barsh that's all that matters uh, ha, ha. Oh, that's a miss it's a miss oh it's a bow i thought it was a gun so you notch your arrow you let it loose and it flies into the darkness and then just snarls at you you have one more ap i'm no i have to use that don't i you can move you can only do perilous stunt once yeah Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do inspiring words then. Okay, I was gonna say the special actions. You got litany of hatred and inspiring words, I don't, and I don't have good leadership. So where's my leadership? So make a leadership test. Number of allies equal to uh, fellowship bonus. Add plus now, one. Now shows leadership is a trained skill. If I don't have it, can I still use it? You can, but you have to flip the result to a failure. Okay. But you can still succeed. Uh, but, so we flip it to a no, 73. It's a fail. Okay. All right. So now we jump to Ruby Goodchild. Right. Okay. So um, refresh my memory again how action works. So Just you have three, three action three. points. Uh, you One can move. Are... You can attack. You can do perilous stunts. You can do special actions. Okay. Do I have them as a handout in here? I was just looking for that. No, I don't. I'll post we, one in chat. Thank you. So I in think the we, Discord. we used to have one, right? We used to. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the big guy in the middle there? That's Durant. That's the man you're working for who's clutching the box and he's shaking. Oh, hell, what's going on here? All right, so the boss hey, I hired is... you to I hired you as security. Take these things out now. Yeah, okay. Um... Hmm. Now, a, a, a parry action counts as a... Um... As one of your action, action. points. So if you think okay. you're going to be attacked, you want to hold on to an action point to parry. If you if you believe you're going to be attacked on this round, how far can um, she move? Um, what is your movement again? Let me find it here. Do you have your? You don't have your old character sheet, Ruby. I have it. It should um, be on there. Second tab. At the top. Tab. Okay. Talents and traits. Movement nine. Three so that's your uh, AB. That's nine squares, right? Nine squares, yeah. Put in the Pope Cthulhu chat, Ruby. Three. Okay, thank you. All right, Ruby will, will advance to here. And she will uh, hurdle a, um, um, her throwing knife at uh, the, the one um, at the two o'clock position here. And she's just going to take up a defensive position next to the boss. Okay, so you're going to move, throw a knife, and then you want to save one for uh, a potential parry. Actually, she gets a, one of her things is uh, lightning reaction. She'll get a second uh, defending shot if she wants it. That's one of her abilities. Okay. So, all right, let's go ahead and throw that. Um, any modifier? Uh, we'll just make it a standard. All right. Standard test. Why is your rating a 13? You're still on your uh, arduous. Yeah. Oh. So re-roll it. Put, it. put your difficulty to standard on the top of your character sheet and re-roll it. All right. Damage 11. That would have been something, huh? Damage 2. So you whip, you whip out the throwing knife, you throw it into the darkness, and it disappears. Uh, no. Um, I, I won't burn a... Uh... Oh, uh, come on. Thing. Well, no, I, we, I want to I'm save them, kidding. although it sounds like we're rolling through them pretty quick. So, uh, And then she sets up to defend. Gets gets her... Yeah, you get nice and close to Durant, and um, it looks like you're, you're closer to the mist. The mist is all around the camp, and it's just opened up that little path, and it's getting thicker, and it almost seems like it's starting to close in and start to constrict on your guys' area. Edmund, you're up again. I'm going to try the same stuff. I'm going to do first... Yeah. Be a dirty trick. Sure. Oh, oh you have to flip it to a pass, right? 17? Yes. Okay, and so they have to make an awareness test. Yep, yeah. and I can get all of them because I'm affected to 15. Bear with me. What is their awareness? I'm just thinking. I have a question for the pyromancer out of... Uh... Out of character? Out of character, Shoot. yeah. Uh, would it? I don't know. I just don't want to waste my actions as long as why I'm asking. It. Would it be beneficial if I like tossed like some, like a stick that's on fire, like over near them? Would it be like help your spells out or anything? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. They well, rolled... I'm gonna grab one to fend myself. <laughs> they rolled a four there, Edmund. They are unaffected by your dirty tricks. Oh, you're doing them as a group. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Is it, you want you want them one by one? I, I, I was just curious. I'm like, you only rolled once. It affects all. Of them. <laughs> it's it affects all of them, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh well, it the affects, second one's a ten. My bonus, my fellowship bonus, which is five times three, so I can affect up to fifteen targets. All right, hold on. I'll roll them each. So one and two. I'm going from. I'm going clockwise. Four. <laughs> Oh, I'm rolling a D10. I'm not rolling a D100. Oh, scratch that. If it fails, passes. Critically passes. Passes. Fails. So, I'm going to mark the two that failed. Is the first one a D10 or a D D100? They should be D D100s, all of them. So there's I thought five you were just total. adding those to, to something. <laughs> yeah, I rolled five total. So... Two of them failed. So with dirty tricks, what happens? They become 
They are blind uh, and they cannot counterspell dodge or parry until their next turn. Ooh. Yeah. So blinded. Yes, that's what blinded means. I've got I got the the handy little uh, reference things here in front of me. I've got the little the little tags. Cannot counterspell yeah, dodge or parry. So and yeah. I'm gonna shoot at that one. Okay. Do this, I'm doing the same thing. Okay. I'm gonna save my last point if I miss. This Durant? is very disturbing. What is the Durant? Yes. My token for Durant? All I right, so you hit. taking this job. And that <laughs> is, yeah, just this, like, topless man walking around, clutching a box. <laughs> well, three damage, unfortunately, is not enough to do anything. There, Mr. Edmund. Yo, I'm holding my last point for if I need to parry your dodge. Okay. Gotcha. Erg, you've got a flaming sword above your head. What do you want to do? You've got two uh, two of these, these hellish hounds that are, like, on the ground, lying on the ground defenseless. Yeah, I'm going well, to go to the closest the one, they're just, I think. They're just kind of running in circles on spot because they're blinded. <laughs> You're just gonna, Can just I go suck. there? Walk yeah, up yeah, to this me? big lumbering ogre pulls a flaming sword out of the sky and just wanders over. I wrote down what page number the burning rules are on, knowing that you'll be playing tonight, Erg. Oh, and I used it as a bookmark in another book. <laughs> I specifically wrote it down knowing you're, knowing you're playing, and then I used the damn thing as a bookmark. Uh, that's a hit. Ten damage. Uh, I get three AP in a in a turn. Yeah, you do. So you've yeah. used two. I'm I'm not saving one. I'm using my third one for your fury die. Mm, that's a nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's uh about. that's your fortune point. You do that to make uh, a fury die a, a six. No, Unless um, you I have an ability. Well, my flaming sword. I can use one AP to use an extra one d six. Oh, okay, got you. So you're gonna you're gonna roll another d6. Okay, roll another d6 and add on to your damage. Oof. Uh, roll it again. Uh, it explodes, right? It's an extra fury die. Eighteen damage. Okay. The big lumbering dunderhead. That's, uh, that's nineteen there, Matt. Brings what your flaming sword down upon this thing. I think I'm just jamming it into it. I, there's not a lot of thought with her jamming the flaming sword into it as hard as I can. Now, don't, doesn't your combat bonus add to your roll on your fury die? Uh, I think we look... Are we talking about Erg specifically? No, I was looking at mine because I'm like, I was double checking to make sure my stuff was coded right, and it says when you're making the range combat after successfully striking, refer to your combat uh, your CB and add one d six fury die determined total. You do. I trust that your character sheets were. I thought they would be the same well, as they were. Ac Erg, can you roll me a d one hundred, please? You've injured this thing. You've seriously injured this thing. Oh, a three. Fortune's mercy. Ignore injury. Keep your fate point and continue fighting onwards. So nothing. Nothing on the old injury chart. But you did 19 damage to this thing, so you bring this flaming sword. What is a big great sword that you're carrying? You're a big no, it's just a, it's a castle forged sword hilt, and the blade is actually made of fire. 19 damage. You bring it down, and this thing starts to burn and starts yelping, and it falls to the ground. As it does so, you see like shadow like tendrils start to come up out of the ground and start to pull the a corpse down and again you notice the corpse mist. did i kill the thing oh yeah you killed this thing you notice that the mist is starting to like close in and get thicker and thicker and you can still hear baying and howling on the other side of the mist you can hear that there's more surrounding you yeah if this thing's dead i'm roaring uh burn with me <laughs> Burn with me. Uh, okay. So. Oh, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. These ones all lurch forward to Durant and Ruby. Um, 
Ruby, one of them is going to attempt to attack you. Okay. 18, that's a hit, so go ahead and roll your parry. Okay. It's a trying attempting to bite you. Ah, gnawing at you. Is that um when I roll parry, um do I do that as a uh as a weapon roll? Court sword roll? Or is that a skill roll? Yeah, it should be under your armor and shields. There's a dodge and a parry button. Yeah, so I'm Got on your it. character sheet right now. So halfway down, you'll see armor and shields. On the right hand side, there's dodge and parry. You just have to hit like the word that you're doing. So you're Got it. So am I I'm not allowed to do both. I do one or the other. Is Correct. That right? Okay. Hey, Matt, just to go back one second, I was just reading the spell. Um, I cannot inflict injuries with the spell. The creature is on fire instead. Okay, well, it's dead. And it, and you didn't get an injury, so good to know. We can roll to see if it's on fire, but uh, or it automatically goes on fire. Is that the thing? Looks like. I'm just reading through it. Okay. Um. So it connects, Ruby. It this one here jumps at you and ah, gnashes at you, and it connects. It's going to do a total of roll my d6 here and see if it can if it explodes. Nope. So five, fourteen points of damage. Whoa. Okay. And it has the uh, the characteristics of. Am I allowed to use a fate chip or anything to try and reroll that? Uh, you can use a fortune point, and you can try to re-roll it. Is that a is that a wise way to spend a fortune point? It's up to you. <laughs> so this... I will tell you this: it also has so it has the quality on its attack because it's it's trying to like it's attacking with its, with its jaws and it's going to try and bring you down to the ground. So it has entangling immediately after stri striking a foe. Weapons of this quality force a foe to resist either a chokehold or a takedown. You choose which. Additionally, whenever the foe is threatened with a chokehold or a takedown with this weapon, uh, you have to flip the result to a fail when it comes to trying to resist it. So this thing's trying to take you down to the ground. I think she'll try and use a fortune point. Okay, use a fortune point and uh, re-roll. Man, I'm getting missed fortune points early. First encounter of the night. Uh, okay, so we're going to re-roll the party. There we go. Hey, that's, that's a better. success. Thank God. So you, uh, you get out of the way of this attack. The other two are l jumping, leaping at Durant as he's clutching the box. Um, oh, Empress, damn it! He reaches towards, he reaches towards Ruby. Oh, I'm not going to make it. And they're jumping on him and they're what just the? gnashing and gnawing and ripping him to pieces. Take it! Take it! He yells. He pushes the box towards you. Okay. He's still shackled to his arm. He just sque keeps screaming. You as heard these the man two Ruby take his arm. Start to rip his guts out and apart. And remember how there's their their saliva was hitting the ground. It was making like little indents. They have like yeah. acidic spit, and it's like eating away at his clothing and flesh. So the, these are the uh, alien, the yeah, creatures from yeah. Alien. Okay, great. It's a lot of flesh there too. <laughs> So they're biting and chewing and ripping this thing apart, and it's his arm. You're you're tugging at it, and his arm comes off from his body, and you've now got okay. his arm attached to the the shackle and the box. Okay. And he's ah, he's being ripped apart. Take it, run, finish, finish. Put him out of his misery. Uh, Vinswick, it's up to you. So again, the mist is closing in more and more, and getting thicker and thicker, and you hear more howling and bang. And you've got the path leading away with the bloody footprints. All right. Um, let's get out of here. Let's go down this path. And I'm gonna try. I'm gonna um say um if we do, uh, I'm gonna use the action inspiring words and say uh, if we do not stick together and overcome these supernatural beasts we will never see the light of the next day so follow me into the mist and i'm going to uh, it says uh, make a leadership test yeah 
Yep, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Hold on, let me look at... Number what... of allies equal to fellowship bonus. Mm -hmm. And plus just... one damage and, and peril to their threshold, so... Okay, and it says I can influence any number of people with my fellowship-based skill tests, so... Uh, I guess that means it's not limited to the number of allies equal to FB. So my FB is, is higher that like than the professional ability that you have. Yeah, it's my um, demagogue ability. Uh, gotcha. So I can affect like massive crowds of people instead of just five people. So, gotcha. but that doesn't okay. matter in this situation. So I was just looking at it real quick. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and roll leadership. Uh, let me double check and make sure I don't have any other bonuses. Sorry. Um, Okay, sorry. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to spend a fortune Ooh. point? <laughs> no. Really? It You're going to let it ride? <laughs> yeah, it was, just, it was literally inspiring words. It was like, if no one wants to be inspired by my words, then I'll Get critically... Uh, <laughs> now critically fail inspiring words. I don't. I don't know. I can't imagine it'd be the worst. Thing. Okay. Uh, as the mist is getting closer and closer, and you can hear, like, panting, like right next to you, as the mist starts getting and close and almost enveloping you. You're sitting there and you're trying to inspire your your comrades, but you're um, you're terrified by the situation, and uh, you're going to take ten points of peril Ooh. damage. Okay. So I think All that right, puts so you over that your threshold. Unhindered. Unhindered, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So you've All got right. two more action points. You can move and or attack or do a perilous stunt. Because that was a special action that you attempted. I don't think everybody starts unhindered. You'd move to imperiled. Oh, imperiled. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, I will fix that in a second. Um, all right. So I, when when I notice no one is inspired, I'm say, I'm gonna say, uh. Back, you foul supernatural beast, or my friend here will slay you with his flaming blade. Rah! And I'm just going to yell and start waving my arms right at him and try to do litany of hatred at them. <laughs> uh, to give them penalties on their damage. And I also, if I succeed, I, they take a D10 plus one mental peril because of my talent menacing demeanor. Uh... So I'm gonna try and do an intimidate test now. Sorry, I'm not a combat character, so I just yell at things and battle it seems. Um, <laughs> let me find intimidate. It is up here. Okay. No, I am rolling terribly. Uh, so yeah, I failed that one too. So just no one's listening to my little grumpy, you, ugly ba bastard of a self. Uh, you've got and one I'm, AP left. Would you like to? I'm run? gonna. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna just start hauling ass down that path and just say, follow the trail. me! <clears throat> yeah. Hopefully and it's it... not into oblivion. <clears throat> and then there was Barsh. <laughs> Alright, so Barsh sees Ruby over there in trouble, so... He, uh, is gonna charge, which is 2 AP. So you can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right there. Oh and you see him raise his Morgenstern with these big, meaty, callous fists fist and just uh, <laughs> swing down on top of this wolf right here. Does uh, CB add to damage? Yeah, I was looking to make sure on your weapon it has... A uh, damage bonus? Is um, it yeah, it? and pick the stat that you use. I didn't have that on my... I guess when it went to the new sheets. All right. That didn't carry over that stuff? No, it had none. Damage bonus said none. Yeah, mine was blank. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hey, here we go. So. I get plus. I nice. get a. Don't I get a bonus to that for charging? I think I do. Charge. Um, charge. Game. So charge means Damage. move twice and add an extra d6 furious. But yeah, so you get to roll an extra d6. You still have to use the. So we were doing it incorrectly in the past. You do the takedown. Um, so it costs 2 AP to charge, and you still have to spend the 1 AP to attack. And I know in the past, we were, <gasps> when we played back in the day, we just did 2 AP, and we got, like, a free attack out of it. 
So I've since learned the error of my ways, so it'll cost you all three of your AP to do that. But yeah, you go in there and you get an extra Fury Die, which is, like, ridiculous. And you get double your, your move, right? Yes. But I didn't need to charge to make it this far. I was doing it because of the extra die. I'd rather keep my extra action and just walk over and hit him, if that's the case. All right. All right. And you got your combat bonus in there? You, you threw it in there? Yeah, my yep, combat bonus and all that magic. So 13 oh. points of damage, huh? All right. Do I roll? Man, I roll a d6, right? No, it's already it's already uh, in there. So if oh, it was already... a 6, it would automatically roll again and compound it on. So you did not, uh... Uh, you did not explode. Uh, so you bring your, what is it, your Morgan Stern, or what are you carrying? Morgan Stern. You did 13, huh? Uh, okay. It's a spiked awesome weapon. You bring weapon. your Morgan Stern down on it, and it, uh, lets out a bit of a yelp. And, uh, yeah. Is it's, it injured? It's, it's okay, it's a little injured, not really. And it turns and looks at you, <laughs> snarling. I'm just I'm just making sure I have everything. The mist, the mist is almost it's like touching you now, and it's cold, and you can feel through the mist the hot breath of an, more of these creatures just on the other side of it. Ruby, show them your back. Let's get out of here. Top of the turn order, Ruby. The mist is also like touching you now. You're almost getting engulfed by it. All right. Well, I'm glad he said that because Ruby just stayed and fought shoulder to shoulder until they died. <laughs> Well, um, does Ruby today. need to do any kind of withdrawal action or anything, or can she just hightail it out of there? No, you need to uh, you need to get out of there, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, is there like up a up or anything? Maneuvers two AP maneuver one yard out of an engagement, avoiding all opportunity attacks. Okay. I'll let you spend that, all of your AP just to get out of there. Disengage and like run as far as you can. Uh, okay, me. Uh, what's my movement again? You said it was <laughs> nine, right? Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six. Yep, good enough. Okay, Edmund, you're so up. So it's on, on the map, but I'm running and jumping on my wagon, and I'm like, get on the car! Your, your, your wagon has been engulfed by the mist. I'm running for my wagon. <laughs> <laughs> your wagon has been engulfed by the mist. I'm running into the mist to get my wagon. You're oh, not taking it away from Edmund. me. Oh, Edmund. No, 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 no. The, the bad things are in the mist. This is, this is like a Stephen King mist. Damn it. <laughs> yes, this is not a good. You never like me having my wagon. <laughs> <laughs> the wagon's always the first it's, to go. It, I'll tell you what. It was your your um your iconic <laughs> trapping. I'm sure a wagon will be presented in your future. All right, it would be <laughs> fair for me to take your iconic trapping away from you. Uh, but for the purpose of How this adventure, it's engulfed by the mist. How does that sound? <sighs> That's funny. Uh, Erg, you're up. You got your flaming sword. What do you want to do? This uh, this wolf thing is it? Is there a body beside me? Uh, like I said, like shadow, like tendrils have come up out of the ground. And they've started like pull it down into the ground, and it's like I'm. Can I one? Can I pick it up and run with the uh, other guys? Pick it up? Yeah, you, uh, you'd have to like. You could try. You can attempt to. He's gonna eat this thing. <laughs> oh, I forgot you eat things. Yes, he's an ogre. Ah, I forgot you do that. You can attempt to. It's going to be an opposed check as the the ground is trying to consume it. Sure. What do you want me to roll? Uh, go ahead and roll your brawn, your brawn, or your you have athletics, athletics. That's under your brawn. Critical fail. Nope. Well, it doesn't. Good. It doesn't okay. lift, and I take off. Yeah. Okay. You just book it with your flaming sword in your hand. Uh. Ooh. Wolfies. All right. Will I Versus drop? ten peril, huh? I'm will, just kidding. <laughs> will I drop Barsh? Will it finally happen? I don't even hurt Barsh. Attack number Hopefully. one. That's a hit, Barsh. You get like a free thing to get out of the way, don't you? Yeah, free pair. As long as I have a point. Do you want to try to parry? It's successful. It's automatically successful. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, he I, forgot. Didn't have to I forgot you were broken. That's why he wanted to save that action. Yeah. 
All right, that misses you, and the last one misses you. Oh, I forgot how broken Barsh was. You're like, oh, it just happens. Uh, it happens. Uh, uh, Vins, you continue to run, I assume? Yeah, yeah. my little gnome legs are just, you know, trucking it at this point. I'm not interested in this shit. I wasn't interested in it uh, yeah, at yeah, all you don't, to begin with. You don't need to remind me there, Barsh. I, I remember <laughs> No, it's okay. I just didn't want to fight a bunch of wolves. <laughs> if it was something else, I would have Jen fought. Jen says, fought run! Him. Run, damn it. That's right, Jen. All right, uh, Barsh, you out of there? Disengaging and running as fast as your little dwarf legs will take you? Your dwarven legs? Well, disengage, but he's not running. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. This is Barsh the Executioner. He would have made it. If he's running, right? It says double moves. So yeah, he would have made it today. All right, so... As you run or you saunter, whatever you do, Barsh, the stride, uh, stride the uh, the mist starts to fill in behind you and engulf the camp, and uh, you catch up to your your comrades and uh, continue on uh, down this path with the bloody footprints that has appeared. I'm gonna switch the overlay back to where we were. Boom, because combat is over. You guys were stubborn and tried to fight it out, but that's okay. That is okay. I could have taken a life there. <laughs> Let's do a little uh, housekeeping and uh, give me my misfortune points now. Ah, look at him. I didn't forget. <laughs> I'm keeping notes. Dang it. Okay. <clears throat> so, you guys are going down a dark path. Um, Erg, how long does your flaming sword last for? Six plus willpower. So one second here. <laughs> I like what you're doing there. No, it's me. I'm bored. I'm sorry. I'll leave alone. <laughs> hey, can I, while we're doing housekeeping, can 12 I? 12 minutes, Matt. Ask okay. a quick question. Sure. Um, uh, for intermediate tier, uh, Ruby was going to take gutter snipe. Uh, any any rules about that? Does that make sense? For I figure that'd be part of her past as a lowborn. Uh, I don't know. We can look at it afterwards. Oh, okay. All right, I'm just trying. But do, do her skills go into that profession bar? I don't like know. I don't, match I don't have to look at it. Okay. Like, no worries. Sure. Yep. So you guys uh, start heading down the trail with the bloody I footprints. Just, I just threw it into the uh, chat there, Matt, so you can take Thank a look you. at it. And uh, you guys are running and running, and you can hear the howling and the baying behind you, but it seems to get more and more distant as you guys are running and jogging or sauntering or striding, whatever it is down the path. But uh, it's like complete darkness aside from Erg's flaming sword. You guys are just like walking in darkness. You can't see the trees around you. You, can, you can't see the ground at your feet barely. You see these red footprints and that's about it. You kind of see like just a few feet in front of you and it is pitch black. While we're running, Matt, I'm going to take out some bandages, wrap them around my hand, and light them on fire for my flaming sword so we don't lose our light. Okay. So side note to everybody here in the chat and uh, and who aren't aware in the player group, he is like, you're immune to fire, right? I'm immune to fire, yeah. So Urk can literally light himself on fire and he will be fine. You need to do that and like become a brawler. That is part of That the is actually the uh, death plan for Erg. He's going to pour uh, gut rot all over himself and try he's, and tackle something. He's going to start <laughs> hugging bad guys. That's how he's going to die. It's ridiculous in this game. Uh, so you guys are heading down the path, grasping your the side of your chest. You stop running. Pain is shooting through your whole body. You look around. You guys take stock of who made it. And it's obvious Durant didn't make it out. Uh, everything was in the bags. You guys had to leave everything behind. You ran with what was on your back Wait. and in your hands. We got the, the box. The box. The darkness is creeping closer and closer box. and surrounding you. You guys can, can see box? in the distance a pinprick of light ahead of you. But we do have Erg, so Erg can see just like the immediate area around him. If not, you guys would have to have rolled awareness tests to make it through. Huddle up, but, guys. But yeah, Erg, huddle up next to Erg. <laughs> but Erg is uh, is guiding the way. Do not lead us in back of wolves, please. You're welcome to hop on my back again there, Ruby. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. 
strange friendship you have. Did we take the arm with us? Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, the arm is dangling, dangling got, hanging. Well, she's got the she's got the box. If, if she can, she'll use her uh, try and use her court sword to hack. Although that's more of a poker. I don't know if it has a sharp blade on it or not. Is so it, who's is, in- the, is it shackled on there? Uh, yeah, it's shackled it's on cut, there. Cut the hand off. Cut it off. Cut okay. the hand off and slide off. Might need to borrow like a, a good cutter. What's our marching order? Who's in the front? Barsh? Yeah. Who's behind Barsh? Well, it doesn't have to be Barsh and Erg. I assume uh, Erg with the light. And yeah, that makes sense. Erg. I'll be on, behind Erg. Well, on Erg is, uh... Yeah, yeah Ruby's on. on my back. Okay, piggyback. Vin's All right. behind. So you guys are making your way down the path and it's just silent and there's mist and darkness all around you except for the little bit of light coming from Erg's arm which is currently burning and you're making your way down the path towards this pinprick of light and it's it's getting a little bit bigger as you go but it's it's quite a distance away as you're going down the path it's eerie Barsh you're up in the front um you're kind of feeling around with your hands as you're as you're leading the path and you touch the bark of a tree which is like rough and covered in knots. But then you do a double take and you're like, no, that's, that's not bark anymore. It's dried, desecrated flesh. Your hand reaches back and you feel, you feel your fingers locking up as you kind of, kind of, the fear takes over, but you're not affected. It just kind of, just kind of hits you. And it just compounds and adds to the eeriness of the situation that you're in. I I don't know where we are anymore. What sort of strange dream have we all fallen into? This, this, this is, ain't no dream. I can I know reality and dreams aren't too far apart. It seems. Sometimes this wood. Sometime passes, and you guys are trampling along and erg all of a sudden underneath your foot you hear a crunch you reach down and you're kind of feeling about and you move your burning arm down and you see that uh you've stepped on a human skull with its mouth open and it's filled with jagged teeth these aren't like normal man teeth jagged they've almost been like filed or something no meat left on it eh there's no meat for you to eat i'm sorry (laughs) Are there any sounds or smells or anything going on? Absolutely. Well, you know what? You know what, Ruby? Funny you should mention that. Only Vins. You notice this. You guys continue on. You're getting closer and closer to that light. And Vins, all of a sudden your nose is assaulted with the smell of home-cooked meals. And your stomach starts to turn in hunger. You take another deep breath and the scent of comfort and safety is suddenly replaced with death and rot. Yeah. Completely turned, and you start to kind of dry heave. Uh, well, hold on. Well, you can determine this. I do have the indifferent trait, which says I've grown accustomed to a okay. smell, the smell of rotting corpses, and it doesn't oh, bother me anymore. Then it doesn't bother you. But yes, at, at one moment, Still you're, disgusting. you're being taken, you're carried away, and you're like, oh, you're out of this like horrible in this. Uh, horrible situation that you're in and uh, then all of a sudden it just hits you and you're hit with that smell of death in your nostrils. Ah, this is reminiscent of my old career path. All too much. Hold your nose, gentlemen. And, and you guys, ladies. And, and lady. You continue <laughs> on and finally, Edmund, you're, you're, you're bringing up the rear and you guys are trudging along and something all of a sudden reaches up and wraps its hand around your ankle. <laughs> holding you for a moment. Yeah, Just I'm definitely scared of stuff like that. So. You kind of kick it away and you look down at the ground and you can't, you don't see it. There's no root. It almost felt like a hand, but maybe it was a root wrapping around your foot. You're not too sure what it was, but you just have like a cold impression left on your ankle where, where it grasped you. My cankle. And your cankle, yes, because Edmund is a very, Me very large fellow. man. So you guys make your way up the road and these strange events happen. But you eventually come to a small clearing. You're on the main road again, it appears. There's a lamppost. A single lantern swinging in the cold night breeze like a long-forgotten criminal. On a giblet. A gibbet. So the sign reads, 
So the north, Mullen, Mullinsburg. To the south, Chesterdale Inn. There's a lantern, so if you want, you can take it. Well, yeah, we here, let's see what's in that box he was keeping to his chest. Yeah. This would be a good time to look. She'll, uh, has she gotten the, the arm off yet? Or... Yeah, yeah, and you've she... taken the arm off. Uh, you can, if you want to try and get into this box. Are you going to eat that? Yes, I, oh, yeah, Irk's, Irk's I don't gonna... imagine we would, sir. You I'll just have it. Hand down the arm for him to munch on. It'll take an arduous skull Disgusting. um attempt to open up the lock. All right, well, she'll tr she'll try it. Um, hang on. I almost picked a uh, new career that had that. Yeah, the, yeah. the I, I've got the, I figured out, uh, I've, I've got most of the snipe worked out. So uh, let's try talents and true. Okay, here we go. And you said arduous. Ooh, minus 30. That's not good. Big money, big money, big money. Uh, ah, yeah, probably. Close. I probably did use the same ruby, to be honest. Tip top to keyboard. That's no stick. Uh, no, you didn't make it. Uh, da, da, and you're not trained in it either, are you? Yeah, I, I am. Okay, so close. Uh, does anybody else want to try to open this this mysterious box? Max? I'm not trained in it, so. Morgan Stern, I can't. Yeah. Morgan, yeah, Morgan Stern, Stern. you just gonna break it? Come yeah. on now. Let's let's go to the inn or something here first. Yeah. Okay, so standing there at the signpost, I everybody please make me a routine education test. Ah. Uh, everybody. This is common. Somewhat common knowledge. So you guys were you guys were carrying on the road between Mul Mullinsburg and Hookstad. And everybody who passed, you guys know. There is no such place as the Chesterdale Inn on the road between Mullinsburg and Fuchstad. I think I've heard of that place. Uh, if does that they, exist? I had to stay over there one time. No, no, there's uh, a sign right there. No, it's it's not, I, 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 I think I remember hearing they have pr pretty good ale. Uh, go ahead and make me another folklore test, but this is going to be a hard one. Everybody, again, at the mention of the Chester. Folklore or education? Folklore. I'm sorry. A hard folklore at the mention oh. of the Chester Dale Inn. Anybody? I'm getting there. Oh, crit fail. Oh, I've heard this place. I know tales. Um, this is hard, right? Let me know when you have a second, Matt. It's hard. Yeah. I uh, whatever I I have mastermind. So whenever I fail a folklore, I can re-roll and take the take the next result instead okay. for free okay go for it barsh passed it though ah uh, well I so like barsh <laughs> you're sitting there and they're all kind of muttering to each other and talking about this uh and all of a sudden you're struck with a memory of the chest jail and you remember there was a story from oh at least a hundred years ago about an inn that was consumed by a an abysmal prince and burned to the ground. Some say it was beset by a whistling demon in black. Others think it was a creature from the astral who looked like, strangely enough, of all things, a circus clown. Hmm. Eight clowns. <laughs> Okie doke. Thank so, Barsh, you remember this. Lost. You can relay this, or you don't have to. This it strikes you. You're like Chesterdale Inn, and it dawns on you where you've heard this name before. Stubby Loot used to tell a tale of this Chesterdale Inn when we were in the pits, and then I I, 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 I tell them everything you just told me about uh. the Chester. It seems to be it seems to be in line with everything else here. Happen upon a sign pointing us to it, an inn from ages ago. It burned down. It's fashion. What do you think, folks? Should we continue northward, or should we make a stay at the inn briefly, try and get our bearings? Oh, I yes, think if, uh, if you have if you have the chance to stay at an inn that. 
doesn't exist. You should take that, yes? Eh. Man, you want Since it. we've seen that white raven, nothing's bode well. We might as well head there. The night's not going to get any easier. We stick together, okay? No matter what, we stick together. And we keep our head on a swivel and look out for anything suspicious. I'm not afraid of ghosts. Regardless if you're afraid or not, they could still kill you. What I've heard. I am afraid I'm no pretty ghosts. sure abyssals are good guys. That's incorrect. <laughs> one of them at the last inn we was at. Remember that back in the day, boys? We can handle this one, too. Yes, yeah, you four yeah. have been through maybe, quite some adventures. Maybe I think, it'll uh, find you another one Silky of them. Silky Smooth hands. might be looking for us still, though. <laughs> Silky Smooth. What did... <laughs> I I'm not that. even gonna ask. <laughs> you remember that, Barsh? Silky Smooth? <laughs> Silky Smooth. <laughs> yeah, that inn uh, has some pretty bad stuff in it. At the, bar, at, at the uh, underground, if I recall. Yeah. And then the horses... Uh, gonna have to find him another matching claw. Yes. Silky smooth. All right. So you guys continue on down the road. You're on the main road now. And you're walking for quite some time. You're walking for, oh, we'll say about 40 minutes. And suddenly, as you walk down the road, you hear the sound of crying and shovels hitting the ground. And it just all of a sudden fills the whole area around you. The road makes a hard left turn as if trying to avoid a small walled graveyard that is sadly sitting by itself, weeping as it crumbles. The iron of the gate is rusting and mournfully sighing as the wind blows it open and closed again and again. Inside, you can see a group of common men and a preacher standing over a single grave. The men are digging and the preacher is reading from the litany of light and order. Uh, go ahead and you can make me a routine folklore test to everybody. Let's change the music here. I don't know how loud this is going to be. Ooh, yeah. Man, I've rolled two 90s and a 70. You missed them by a little bit. Missing can I spend some luck on that one? Five. Do you want to spend some more fortune? Would you like to no. give me more fortune? Where's just a little, fortune? just luck. Not luck. Is it routine? Yes. Yeah, it's routine. Oh, I'll probably get this. Bam. Nope. It was you, close. You hear the new music as you get close to the graveyard. We've got this sound of organs. That's not really playing. I just changed it for us. All right. Gotcha. So, those who passed, you know that he is reciting a warding blessing against evil and not a funerary rite. I'm going to, uh, just in my gruff voice, just let everyone know uh, that information, basically. Uh, as we approach, just kind of quietly whisper it to him. So you're standing there at the gates of the cemetery, and you can kind of hear the people standing over the grave talking. You hear one say, this isn't right. She was left here for a reason. And another Dude. answer is, trust, trust Father Reno. He knows He knows what to do. And then an, a, a woman says, I just want this to end. It's gone on long enough. And bringing this bitch up from the ground is what it takes. And so be it. And the men are all, they're furiously digging. Good evening, gents and ladies. Yeah, so Edmund, you, you saunter over and you... you Nobody turns around to, to look at you. <laughs> do we, do we just, really want to engage them? Come. <laughs> I'll make a warning sign. You can hear as you're standing there and you see them digging and you can hear cracking of wood. They've struck the coffin below and you see two men hop down into the grave and they hoist out a body wrapped from head to toe in white funerary cloth bound tightly so they cannot make out any of the features. Sh shouldn't we all, shouldn't we keep, I mean, this is not something we want to engage after all of the strange events this evening, correct? Uh, no, it's not going to get any easier, I told you. I pick up a rock and just toss it like at the back of somebody to see if it bounces off of them or if it goes through them. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, are you sure, doing? Sure. Uh, 
<laughs> what are you doing? Why are you throwing a rock at this person? I'm not throwing, I'm tossing. Yeah, you toss it and it goes right through them. Go ahead and make, oh, me, make, make me a hard... Make me... All of you who witnessed this need to make me a hard resolve test. Ooh, a hard one. Oh, yeah, you are... You just watched. You just watched a rock go through a person. Yeah, I was busy eating by by the roll I just did. Gnawing on that arm of Durant. What? Yep. <laughs> Flaming arm in one hand. Uh, <laughs> Would have made it if it hadn't been eating another arm. arm. Oh, by the way, I for completely forgot. My character has a um, prosthetic leg. So it's very poorly made. So he would have been hobbling down that path very slowly trying to get away from these wolves. Anyway, I just noticed that. Sorry. Um, all right. So we're making a resolve check. Yeah. And you said it was hard resolve or what? Yeah, it's what? hard. Yeah. Right. Oh, Lord. I was looking to see if I had an ability that affected it. I'm still trying to get familiar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everybody failed takes 20 mental peril. Holy shit. <laughs> Does that apply? Blood soaked and visceral scenes. This is not. This is fear. <laughs> you're 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 seeing ghosts in front of you. Asked. Dang yeah. it. I was wondering the same thing too. I was like, come on, it has to do with scenes of death. No, I'm just kidding. Um so all right, help me out here. I took twenty you said twenty points. My threshold my first threshold is a fifteen, so it's nine, then it's fifteen, so I just take one point, right? Uh, because my next threshold is a 21. That means I don't so take... So it's a, what, a points. 9? A, a, what is it? Sorry, read them up to me again. Oh, sorry, it's 9, 15, 21, 27. You go down two tracks if it's a 20. Ah, oh, hell. All right. So, uh, damn. Ru <laughs> so I think Ruby fell too. What is she, What happens to her then? Uh, What does your peril track look like, Ruby? Uh, 8, 14, and 20. You're going to take... You're going to go down two tracks as well. So okay, so I, I go to all the color drains from I'm I'm almost like passed out from fear. Oh really? Yeah. I start to yeah, nervously because, uh, hobble away. Because <laughs> mine is seven, thirteen, nineteen, so that would be three points, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I hit uh <laughs> I'm one <laughs> point. Um Yeah. So you do this and like all like the group of you are just like scared shitless. At what you witness and they continue on with what's happening the the priest starts to sprinkle a few drops of holy water upon the head of the body that was exhumed and holding forward a symbol of the god emperor the five diggers they each drop a rose on the grave and walk out with their ghastly prize and they pass they go right past the group of you they don't look at you they don't pay any attention they don't even notice what they have no. yeah uh Let's leave. Let us leave, please. As they walk by, everybody make me a standard awareness t uh, test, please. Hey, a bunch of you guys are going to be ignoring skill ranks now, but it's fine. Yep. I ignore three skill ranks. Does it? Do, <laughs> does the sheet calculate it automatically? Uh, no, it does not. That's a good question. So how do we get that to minus then? Uh, we could just... Do you have any skill ranks in awareness? I, I have none, so I have okay. one. So you'll just ignore your your one then. And as you said, routine. Yeah. So oh, then standard. Be... I'm sorry, standard. Standard. Okay, so then it would be challenging for me then. Oh yeah, you could just adjust the, the difficulty on the sheet. Yeah, I'm good. So Barsh notices, and anybody else who passes, as they walk by you, they seem light on their feet, and they're not leaving any footprints behind. <laughs> well, duh. So they walk on by, and this is a small graveyard. There's only, oh, maybe a dozen headstones at most here. And most of them are in the form of the hammer of the god emperor. There's a few hearing about star and cross and other forgotten religions. Um, but uh, yeah, the, suddenly you notice the mist is starting to surround the graveyard once again. We're being tagged on cattle. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, gonna g head to that um 
that in for sure <laughs> and try or maybe not by myself but like you know, i'm gonna wait for some people and just sort of hop yeah you know, i move so slow i just move a few paces and motion and try and get everyone to edmund you were in at the grave so you can re- you read the what's on the tombstone and it reads daughter of sadness jacqueline Devereux, 1560 to 1585 now here is it it's 1660 is about over 100 years ago gents so you you you're standing there and down within the grave there's five shuttle uh, shuttles shovels and a shattered coffin that they pulled the body from you also notice within the graves a small scrap of paper laying within the coffin covered in dried blood I'll reach down and grab it. Yeah, written on the paper, there's five numbers. 56, 78, 39, 4, and 7. Today's daily numbers. Yeah, right? I got a lotto ticket, right? Yeah, you gotta go play the lottery. <laughs> yeah, it's probably eight ages is what I would guess. But... There's your numbers. I'll put them in the chat there for you. There's no there's no uh, test tied to this. It just dawns you like this. this it's probably something important. Don't keep it with me. Um, you can once again hear the howling get louder and louder around you. Keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally catch up and pass me, hob- hobbling down <laughs> towards so, the sign again. I- you guys start the- to make your way outside the the, ce- the cemetery, and the uh, the mist has engulfed the whole cemetery. And you've got the baying and the howling of the wolves again. Well, suddenly, there seems to be a trend. Suddenly, three of them leap out of the mist. Are they following their box? Are they following their what? That box. That's what Bosch yells. Oh, yeah, good call. Get rid of that damn box. Do on they seem map? focused on the box? Um, No, they don't. Not not from what you could tell. On this map, there's a crypt there with stairs leading down. Just ignore that. This is just a map that I used. Uh, there is no crypt with stairs leading down uh, where you are currently I'm gonna at. I'm going to go in so, the crypt. Yeah, I'm going to run to the crypt. There is no What's crypt. the crypt? Go downstairs, <laughs> please. That's the end. So uh-huh, yeah. remember in this game that your initiative stays the whole time. It doesn't change in a session. Oh, yeah. You roll at the beginning of the session. So your initiative sticks. I'm going to leave the same for the wolves. There's not only, happy about uh, that. <laughs> There's only three this time. Uh, so, Hans, you get to go right off the bat. Or not Hans, uh, Edmund. I want to say Hans because Hans got first. Shot first. So, Edmund gets to go first right off the bat. Okay. Now, keeping in mind that you ignore skill ranks. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and try the same crap again. I'm going to do a guile test, which I don't have any ranks in anyway. There's two in front of you, and there's one to the east. There's only three this time that leap out. What do these things look like? They're big wolf-like beasts. They have long lashing tongues. They got glowing yellow eyes and there's like acidic spit. Sa- same, these are exactly the same as last Ex- time. Identical yeah. to what you fought last Gal time. Gal doesn't work. So I think we're gonna... being herded to the inn here, guys. Now, is there four of them? There's three. There's only three. Okay, because I saw one under there. There was one, and it was deleted. It never happened. It never existed. <laughs> I'm going to move over here, and then I'm going to shoot at that one. Sure. I'm going to go in the crypt. There's no crypt. <laughs> Just a, a graveyard, damn, damn it. Damn. Hang on, I've got to turn off. I'm so... Fire! Hang on, I've got to adjust my challenge to challenge. I'm holding, I'm holding, Edmund. <laughs> How do you like that organ music? Oh, uh, it's dig spooky oh, music. All right, that hits seven damage. Patui, you fire. <laughs> the blast goes off. Oh no, it's an arrow, isn't it? There's no blast. Just like an arrow flies through the night. It connects to its target, uh, but it does not seem to uh, to hurt it. Wonderful. Now it's Ruby's turn. 
Uh, what are we doing here? We there... You are surrounded by mist yet again. You are stuck in this cemetery surrounded by mist, and you've got three of these wolf creatures coming at you. Is there an obvious direction to run? There is no path with bloody footprints this time. No, you are completely enclosed. All right, You're well, still I'm... on my back, too, eh? Yeah, Ruby's on top of the... Um on top of the back here so she's going to uh are you allowed to hold action or anything here yeah there's a weight um thing in the thing here it says uh wait you wait until later to use your ap's but place yourself lower down the initiative ladder yep so, yeah. that's what that's what ruby will do she's gonna go after uh bart barsh or barsh <laughs> bart yeah, Bart, Barsh, Barsh, don't call me Bart. Um, okay, Edmund, it's your turn again. I'm gonna shoot the same one. Do it, do it. Where's my button? There it is. Nope. I'm gonna save my other two points for uh, defense. Okay, Erg. Flaming sword time again? Okay, no, I don't think this time. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to take Ruby's advice and just wait for uh, Barsh, Barsh here. Okay. Everyone's waiting on Barsh. Apparently everybody's waiting on Barsh. We're all afraid of getting killed. You don't have that problem. <laughs> well, she just doesn't want to charge into battle either if the rest of you aren't going to like go Ruby's for Ruby's also strategically placed between everybody. Oh, well, look at this. <laughs> well, look at this. All right, one of them is going to charge at you, Vins. I'm not made for combat. Not me, sir. I'm wearing a fancy shirt. 59. Um, so it lunges at you and it snaps at you with its jaws. Are you going to um, use one of your AP to attempt to um, get out of the way? Uh, yeah. To parry. I, mean, I, would, I would think so. Yeah, I have my... um. I have, like, my uh, iconic trapping is, like, a fancy gemmed scepter. You know, matches or sets my outfit off, usually. So I'm going to uh, like flip it around and try and parry with the non-gemmed end. I don't want to knock the uh, the ruby off. Uh, or not ruby, but uh, I'll come sapphire. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so how do you remind me? So par- you're going to try and parry, and <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. there's a button for it. So just click the, the word parry. It's on the skills and talents page of your character sheet on the right-hand side, I think, like halfway down. There's dodge and parry. Aha. Why am I stupid? Tabletop to word. He's like, that's a lot of peril. Yeah, it is, man. 20 <laughs> is a uh, half ton. <laughs> of peril and boffrin says lotto time with those numbers play them numbers i mean i'm am i stupid and i just don't know where let me look at your character what are you looking for he's looking for his uh parry so you... talents and trappings i was Second in the page. wrong spot scroll halfway down right hand side uh and just click the parry button sorry it's okay Ugh. No. All right, so this thing connects. Remember, it entangles. It's got entanglement, and it has... What are the other qualities? Remember, the qualities Acid on our weapons mouth. are very, very important in this game. So entangling, slow, and weak. So weak means weapons of this quality can only inflict moderate or serious injuries, not grievous. So it can't uh, can't grievously injure you. Um, and it is also slow... Which means whenever a foe is struck by weapons of this quality, they gain a plus 10% chance to dodge or parry. So, even with that, you oh, had a 70, right? So, or a 52 it would be your target number. Look at it that way, actually. Yeah, still 52. missed. So, entangling. Immediately after striking a foe, weapons of this quality force a foe to resist either a chokehold or a takedown. Um... Chokehold is an athletics test, and takedown is either coordination or athletics. Uh, I'm gonna do chokehold. So you need to uh, you need to roll me a uh, an athletics test to resist being taken down. All right, so it lunges at you, and it sinks its teeth into your arm, and it starts wrestling with you, and it pins you down to the ground. Get this piece off of me! Ah! 
Okay, and let's roll the damage. Let's do the damage. No. I don't mean no pl please don't. Please. <laughs> um. 12 damage? How, what, does right. that, what does that do to old Vin's? That uh, lightly, uh, moderately wounds me. Moderately wounds, so we have a chance for. Uh, let me an just make, that, make sure that's correct before we give myself an injury. Before... Uh, my damage threshold is 3, 9, 15, 21. And I was unharmed. Yes. yes. That is correct. Okay, all right. So Thank let's you. roll for an injury. Mm -mm. <laughs> roll, roll a d6. It's a 2. No injury, no injury. No whammy, no whammy. Right. I have all those. I have all those misfortune points that I could spend and just automatically give you an injury. But yeah, uh, let's, let's, this is session one of an adventure path. I don't want to kill you. And I have one leg. <laughs> Barsh, it's your turn. I'm gonna roll to attack you. Okay. Oh, I don't even need to. You. Well, okay. Let's see if it hits. Well, you, you it can hits, do a but you shot. dodge. Yeah. Okay. And Erg misses. Uh, I'm gonna spend a fortune. Hits. You want to try and dodge? Erg. Wait, wait. Can Ruby parry it? Dodge it. Attack or... Ruby. It attacked Erg. But but Ruby's on his back with no, her with her court sword out. Ru Ruby's between. <laughs> no no Good no try. Ruby. <laughs> oh Mike. It was worth a try. He he's always trying. I'd allow it. He's always trying. All right, so that one connects. Eight, same damage. Uh, Twelve damage, Erg. And it's also going to make you. It's going to try and take you down to the ground. So make me an athletics check as it tries to bring you down to the ground. Yeah, you're good. You're not. You you just kind of like shake it off. It's like gnawing and. Whipping its head back and forth, and you just kind of like, get out of here. Get out of here! You hold out your burning arm, and it's like, ah! But it bites your burning arm, but it does not get engulfed in flames. Uh, what does that do for your damage? Is that just like one point down your threshold? Yeah, you're, big, I, you're my, big and beefy. My threshold's 12, 18, 24, 30. Oh, 12, you're fine. Okay. Uh, so it is. Barsh is not on there. Oh no, it's Vin's turn. Sorry, it's Vin's turn. Barsh Everybody's waiting on Barsh. Okay. Um, is there a door here? <laughs> no, that crypt does not exist. There is no crypt. Oh, uh, there's it's, no crypt at all. I, I thought just the it's stairs just didn't exist. No, I thought there's no just crypt. The stairs there's didn't. absolutely no crypt. It's just a small Son symmetry. Of a bitch. Is there anything to take cover like in this area? Uh, Where tomb, there'll the... be a tombstone. You're being held down. Can he break loose? Yeah, I want to try that to first. You have to try to resist to get away. Yeah. So, go ahead. You make me another athletics test. Oh, ah. what did you? What did you roll before? You're supposed to flip it to fail. What did you roll? I miss. I messed up on that. What? Uh, I'll just remember that from that ne next time. It's flip to fail. I don't, I'm confused. It, well, he rolled 80 last time, so he it wouldn't have... It oh, was, right, right. So he didn't pass. Uh, right. Erg. Erg's the one who passed. Oh, he flips it to be a three, so Erg's fine. Never mind. It was Erg I was thinking of. All, All right, right, so you try to break free, and you're still being pinned down by this thing. All right, I have one more, ac one more action point, right? Because I parried earlier. Yeah, so you've got one left. Uh, try it again. All right flip to fail but that's a 32 so you would still pass yep all right so you push this thing off of you back off you beast help you you bastards need to help me this thing's going to eat me alive all right so i'm gonna let barsh act i know everybody's waiting for barsh but i'm gonna let barsh take his turn and then everybody can do who waited on barsh can go so barsh you're up buddy all right this wolf right here is gonna feel Fury. Fear of fury and death. Oh, have I, you, will, uh, I will tell you this right now. We are coming to the close of this part of the adventure, and you have three fortune points left. Keep that in mind. Okay. Marsh doesn't need them. All right. I will tell you guys <laughs> that. 
<laughs> uh, he may. All right, let's yeah, he see. might. This, this game is hard. Roll a 99 <laughs> or 100 now. No, I'm just thinking, like, for Fury Dice. I'm just giving you a heads up. Oh. Okay, but we, we can we have to do that. We can do that after, though, right? Yeah, you can. No yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to do it ahead. Oh, okay, I'm okay. just letting you guys know that we're getting close to the end of this, this section. So you might want to spend them. It's a hit. 11 it's a hit. damage. So you got a three on your fury die. Do you want to re-roll that? And start with a six and then roll again. We'll just take three off of that 11. Yes. So you'd have a nine. You have nine points of damage base. You can roll a d6. Okay. It's automatically six, so, so you're facing at 15 damage, 17. What are you using? What, what does this look like? The oh, this. this is, um, and I have, um, I have a bunch of stuff. I have a coup de gras. I have all kinds of, is, so if he's, is he wounded? Uh, yeah, he's wounded. He is moderately wounded. It, Ow! Well, every, if, but that's not an, that's not an injury, right? So now I'm gonna roll a d6, and if I have a get a if I roll a six, you can roll me d6. I don't care. I've been rolling them, but roll me d6. If it's a six, uh, he gets an injury. I love your supernatural hound noise you make. <laughs> no, so no injury. You can spend a fortune point to make it an injury. Is he grievously <laughs> wounded at all? That would be moderately wounded. Well, anyway, he gets slapped back. When I when I hit hit on the powerful immediately after striking and engage four weapons of this quality, force a foe to resist with toughness or be shoved out of the engagement. Oh, okay, so he gets to attempt to resist. Yes. All right. You're just like, hey, he just gets shoved back. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, what does he get to resist with? You said toughness. Yes. These guys have a good toughness. Good for me. Some broken ribs there. That's what I was hoping to trigger. Oh, gotcha. Braun. All right. Braun. Uh, or that. Um, <laughs> toughness plus two. Bosh just has everything. Uh, no, I don't want to add 20. I'll be to my base number, actually. Okay. Uh, no. No, no, no. So he's pushed back. <laughs> If that's the sound he makes, no one fears that. No one fears it. All right, so you got um, you got Tell two AP left, character. don't you? Uh, do I have what? Yes, I have an AP left. You have two AP. So you've already used your attack action. Yep. But you can use perilous stunts. Um, there's no perilous stunt I want to use right now. So that's it. You're just. I'm sitting on this too. Okay. All right, so who who held first? Was it Ruby held first or what Edmund? Did, no, you got away and backed up Edmund? Yeah, Edmund. Ruby held first than me. Okay, so Ruby, you get to go. All right, Ruby is going to... Um, what's the status of uh, Vinswick? 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 Vinswick. Vinswick is uh, I'm, up. I'm at... I'm up. I'm scared shitless and... I'm like halfway down both tracks towards towards the the shitty end. <laughs> All right, um, Ruby leaps forward uh, a square. I don't, I don't know if there's any special sure. action involved there. No, no, no. It's your movement. Yep. And she is going to skewer this doggy. Okay. <laughs> Next to Vinswick. Yeah, back to yeah. hell with you, you foul beast! You're a she bravo, barks. aren't you? Your first profession. Yes. Yeah, you are. Okay. She is going to fillet. Do you have any special abilities that you can use as a Bravo to? to yeah, help? her special abilities um, really focus around other melees. Okay. So, like, uh, if someone was fighting. She does get an extra defense, but. All right, so she's going to go ahead and attack. And just a regular Did... roll, right? Yes. You missed it on the last combat. I'm just looking at it. You have Vim and Vigor. When you parry a melee attack, or you didn't parry, did you? Immediately take an attack of opportunity. You know, I did parry once. Yeah, so just That's keep right. that in mind. I know we're relearning our characters. That's why I bring it up. Yeah. It's a critical failure. Do you want to spend a fortune point? Yeah, we'll spend a fortune to see if okay, we can re -roll. save. So we're down to two fortune points. No, we're down to one fortune point because Barsh uh, used one to do fury die. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to hold off then, so in case somebody needs to live. No, uh... We're down to two. We'll be down to one if you use. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I don't want anyone to die. So um, could she take a second attack with her extra points or no. not? No, negative. Okay, so she will... Uh, um, she has p parry left, though. So she'll just stand and try and get this thing's attention. Okay, so you critically failed. So something bad's going to happen to you. <laughs> right? Maybe the dog will attack me. Yeah, the dog's going to get an attack of opportunity on you. Let's see if it hits. It does not. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> Overextend. All right, now oh, I'm going down the track here. Erg, it's your turn. I'm just going to try and whale this thing with my staff. Okay. We know that you do a lot of damage with your staff, thanks to your uh, your high combat bonus. Holy crap. You rolled a <laughs> one. Do you want to spend one of those to... Uh, you got a base damage of 10. Do you want to spend one of those fortune points and uh, make it 16 and then roll another d6? I love to combat in this game. Do what? He rolled a 62. Oh, he missed. Never mind. I just assumed yeah, that I he didn't, hit. Yeah, I didn't hit the thing. Okay. Carry on. Is there anything else you want to do, Erk? Um. You try and choke hold it? Yeah, you know what? I, I think... I, I've still got two AP. Yeah. I'm just going to... Let's go inspiring words. I'm just going to scream, kill these freaking things. I like how our Dunderhead is doing... Trying to spread the uh, inspiring words. Duh, hurt him good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what do I roll for that, Matt? Leadership. Uh, yeah. Leadership, yep. And if you're not trained in it, you have to flip to fail. Mmm. Mm, he passes. Either way. Uh, hit him good, dudes. So everybody, right? Number of allies equal to fellowship bonus. What's your fellowship bonus? Your FB. Literal number. Four. So all of your allies. Cool. Gain a plus one to damage and peril thresholds. So you're, you're just a little bit beefier. Thanks to Erg. You guys are all thanks. like, hey, break out that flaming sword again, man. <laughs> He's like, hit and, him good. Hit him good, guys. And there's I, a per peril I, modifier I, section, by the way, everybody. So you can go ahead and add that in. There's not going to be a lot of rests here. So I'm going to try and save some spells. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Ruby, you're up again. You want to try and hit that, uh, that doggy again? Or do you want to yeah. do yeah, I do. Uh, now, she's got three. She's got a lot of action points. Can she do anything to improve her hit, like a called shot or something? Uh, there's take aim. Yeah. Or no, I'm sorry. There isn't. Um, called shot makes yeah. uh, they can't dodge or parry your attack. That yeah. costs you two AP. So she's got to do that. Okay. And she's going to try and hurt this thing. Do it. Do it. Harry, as I like how the first round everybody looked to Barsh. So like, I'm just going to win on Barsh. That's right. All right, it so it's, work. it sidesteps out of the way of your uh, your court sword. Do you want to use yep. a fortune point or no, just no, let it we're ride? Gonna, we're going okay. to let it ride. Do you want to use a... You've got one action point left. Do you want to save it? you want to hold on to it? Because that costs you uh, two. Yeah, yeah, she'll save it. Edmond. <sighs> what do I want to do? I guess I'm going to uh, run. No, can't. The mist is all around you. Now that one there is it laying down? It got knocked. No, it just knocked backwards. It just got knocked backwards. It's no longer engaged, but it I is. Suppose. It is injured. It is hurt. The one just south of Barsh. The others are not hurt. The others are unscathed. Okay, I'm going to shoot at the uh, injured one then. And all it takes is a six. Oh, oh, Ooh. Ooh. he rolled a one plus That's one it's lit up. So I get a plus one on that. So it'd be seven total. Did that not do anything? So it's a hit. What's your plus one from? I'm sorry. 
from the uh, inspiring words? Got no. So it's for your damage and peril threshold. So it's for when it's taking HP, damage. Basically. Oh, it's not the damage I deal. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it, yeah, it's making you like more hardy, beefier. You can take okay. more. I thought it was plus one to our damage and the resistance to the peril. Oh, no. It's like, hey, things aren't as bad as they seem. Thanks, Erg. Right, yeah. The shorthand is a little misleading. It does say plus one damage and peril threshold. It'd be more clear if it's a damage threshold and peril threshold, but I I could kind of see how it could be. Six points of damage, you let loose an arrow, and it slams into this thing, but it doesn't seem to injure it. Yeah, I'm going to hold my other two... Points for uh, after Barsh defense. Oh, okay, defense. Uh, Erg, you're up. Your arm's still burning. You never put it out. Yeah, that I don't even notice it though. So <laughs> I just you know mildly on fire. I'm I'm just saying though that you have like a burning club Punch called your arm. Fire. You're such a generous leading carrying GM. Yeah, right? Oh, you just missed. Do you want to use a fortune? Oh. No. <laughs> no. Use a damn fortune point, Erg. All right. All for right. for uh, Barsh to get the fortune points. Erg, that's one of your three actions. What else do you want to do? Well, leadership worked good. Let's intimidate these things. Would I roll for uh, intimidate? You want to do litany intimidate. of hatred? Make an intimidate test equal to the number of foes plus uh, foes equal to your fellowship bonus, which is fine. And they all suffer minus one in their damage and, pe- and th- peril threshold. So it's the opposite. So you guys got buffed. They're going to get debuffed. Yeah, I'm just going to scream stupid dogs. Okay, so make me an intimidate <laughs> test. I swear, if he succeeds. I know, right? My character's a politician. <laughs> succeeds. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> or. Nice. Sorry, God Emperor. My bad. <laughs> Stupid dogs oh. works. <laughs> Stupid dogs. And they're like. <laughs> you hurt their feelings. It's not the word. It's the bellow from your giant ogre body. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to Barsh. So this one up here with Vins. Let's roll uh, to see who it attacks. Because we now got Ruby in the mix. So uh, a one is Vins, two is uh I am prone, Ruby. by the way. Ruby. Yeah. It's going to attack you. Very good. Uh, the one that was engaged with Barsh is going to attack him again, and the one that's with Erg is going to attack Erg again. So I, I think I, I think I have, I have to spend the points, though, right? I do have to spend my... Don't have to spend uh, the points to parry still. It says it automatically succeeds. But you still have to spend the AP. I mean that that that's that would that only make sense, sense to me. me. Not that you can just sit down one AP and dodge forty eight attack. What uh, dwarven warfare? Yeah. Um, so Ruby, that that hits you. Do you want to attempt to uh, to dodge? Uh, parry, please. Uh, parry, yeah, parry. Sorry. If you're successful, avoids a... all damage. Ooh. Would you like to re-roll? I would like to re-roll. Okay. We have one fortune point left. Really anxious to get those fortune points out of there. Yeah. I can tell. Okay. All right. Here we go. And party number two. Oh, oh my oh. god. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to say you do not get to attempt to break its hold, and it throws you to the ground. Okay. It's chokehold. That's we're really roll. bad. We're going to roll damage. It is I put bad. That, I put that, like that little symbol on my token for uh, being prone, by the way. Ouch. What that thing is. How did I get an 8 on my D6? Oh, no? How? What? You get 8 plus 8. Oh, it exploded. Was... Really? D6. Yeah, yeah. See the exclamation point after it? So I rolled a 6. Ruby is having a bad day. 16 points of damage, Ruby. Okay. Ooh, are you injured already, Ruby? No. Physically? Okay. So that's on the second page of your character sheet. You Fading got a 7, a 13, and 19. So 
That's going to go down through your 7 and your 13. So it's going to take you to 2 moderately wounded. Where do I go for this? It's on the Skills? second page of your character sheet. Talents and... Um, oh, trackers. right, right. And it's on the right-hand side. You scroll down. It's underneath your dodge and parry. So you got a 7, a 13, a 19, a 25. So 16 points of damage is going to take you through lightly wounded and onto moderately wounded. So we're going to roll for an injury. Welcome to the club. No injury. No injury. <sighs> You're okay. Awesome. But you're pinned to the ground. Uh, Barsh, that one's going to attack you. I don't know what that was. Wow. Ruby called for help. Oh. Um, it misses you. You don't even need to use your parry. And Erg, that one misses you with a 93. Uh, da -da. Vins, your turn. You successfully uh, broke the chokehold, so you're going to stand up. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, and run away? It's engaged with Ruby right now. Yeah, I'm going to get up, which is two <laughs> two actions. I stand up prone and move one yard, so that I imagine that's a square. Yes, yeah, square is one yard. You're correct. Okay, so I'm <laughs> going to move back. I'm no longer prone, so I'll get hey, rid of Edmund. that. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to... Don't draw him over here. Do, word, do inspiring words stack... I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Adam in the chat, because I always ask Adam those questions, but he's not here tonight. I, I won't do it this turn, but I'll look it up after my turn's over. And I'll, find out, but, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, evade. You save my actions for sure. evading. Yeah. Okay, Barsh. My one action point, I mean. You're up, buddy. Right. Here we go with the, the Morgenstern. Die, beast. <laughs> The same one that I knocked back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I assume so. Oh, so wait. I, lo I lose a skill oh. rank, so should I make Je it hard? Jen says no stacking. Ah, uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you make that a hard roll. There you go. Jen asked, or uh, Jen answered, no stacking. Didn't figure it. You could boost yourself way up enough. Yeah, right? right? We are invincible and stoppable in this grim and perilous world by just using our words. Uh, no, so that goes wide. Dang it! I can't use uh, inspiring words while well, under stress anyway. For being injured or who? Who? No, who? it's for peril, right? Oh, from peril. Do you want? Don't you have one of those? What do y'all had a deal where you could ignore the peril or automatically remove it? I have. <laughs> I have all kind of stuff. Because I remember that in that last game, the one y'all could just like shrug that shit off. Get to know your characters again. I mean, you're up one because of my terrible leadership thing. Oh, I am. Okay. So. Oh, hey, would that have no, affected that's just, my? That's just to resist. Would, would that have affected the the damage level no. Rudy went to? No? no. Okay. No, I don't think I don't think that's me. Okay. Uh, did you want to use a panel of stunt or anything there, Barshi? Barshi, Barsh? Um. Yeah, I guess I, I can use inspiring words. Uh, oh, wait, look. We've already used it. Yeah. See that? I was supposed to uh, remove, um, because I used one last turn, right? Yeah, that's what the one I was thinking of. Okay. <laughs> Barsh can do everything. Barsh can do... When it comes to combat, Barsh can do everything. So, yeah, I would have went up on the track. You would have missed by one, though. Yeah, that's fine. But, it, you know, I'm just in peril now. Um, I want to use inspiring words. Nope. We've already oh, got it. It doesn't stack. Oh, stack. I, nothing I can do then. You can try a chokehold or dirty tricks or disarm or knock out or... Okay, Stunning knock out. blow, takedown. Disarm won't work. Yeah, disarm a uh, big wolf-like creature. But uh, you can do any of those perilous stuff. Knock teeth out. Okay, I will. Which which one do you want to try? I will do knockout. As long as it uses my weapon. Perilous stunt, let's see. Knockout, when a foe is defenseless, which they are not. No. I can't. Think. Stunning blow, make an athletic sense. Foe must resist. Yep. And they saw one less AP. Yeah, I'll do that. Resist toughness. Okay. Gonna... Okay, here's my See athletic it. test. So you have to stun him first, then try to knock him out. Yeah. That's cool. 
So here's my athletics. As soon as I can find it, which I am trained in. He resisted. I rolled a 40. Close. Dang it. All right. Now, are they opposed rolls? No, you said the pass. Resist toughness or be stunned. So, rolled under. It's like the same thing as dodging or parrying, right? You just have to make it and you negate all damage. Okay. Uh, who is holding stuff? Who is holding actions and turns and all that? Anybody? Nobody? Not a... Can Ruby attack? Does Ruby attack when she's pinned or is she not able to move? You have to try to resist. You have to try and break free. But this thing pinned you after your turn, did it not? You did your so. action and then it pinned you because they go after you in turn order. Uh, just Ruby's at the top of the order. That's what I was asking. Yeah. So, with that suddenly, the silence, the heat of combat is broken up by the sound of a flute being played. You look over to the gates, and standing in the gates is a strange figure. You see an almost uh, jester-like figure with a skull face playing a flute. And as he does so, the mist starts to break. And as the mist breaks and he starts to play, the wolves break away and they flee from the scene. And he starts walking down the path and he... You see the funeral uh, procession in front of him that was carrying the body away. Uh -oh. And he starts to follow it. And behind him is left bloody footprints. Guess we better follow those footprints. Not. They saved us last time. Or took us into more peril. Eh, I can't. It's one way to look at it. And with that, we're at the end of the session. All right. Sounds good and creepy and and uh, whatever. What's what, cliffhanger? Bloody foot, foot, the bloody footprints. That's just freaky. That's and that's what you guys. Yes, that's right. The fat guy being ripped apart Save in the beginning. Yeah, that's pretty. You rough. still don't know what's in the box. Yeah. No, you still don't know what's in the box. Save by the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Chasing what's the in point. the box. So in that was box. part one of five. Uh. We can combine some of these because they are uh, a little bit shorter. So we're going to lose Ruby, aren't we, for the rest of this? Because you're gone for two weeks. Two weeks. Oh. So we're going to be down Ruby. <laughs> Ruby's going to die in the graveyard. No, I'm not going to. Hey, 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 hey. Because we're going to get back to Mortis Wyhander after this. So, yes. um, yeah, that's the only way I can get to, I can get to Gian to play with us again. No. So, <laughs> I'm up now. That, that in earlier times. So that brings yes. us to the end of the session. Um, I'm going to give you guys, oh, four corruption based off of all of the terrible <gasps> things that you experienced and faced during this adventure. It's nothing you did. You guys didn't do anything wrong, but it's the, the horrors oh, that yeah. you were exposed to. So you guys can remember what happens. You roll and you can, that's going to determine whether you go up or down on the track. We didn't do that at the beginning of the... Game. No, we didn't do it. At the I had six in there from before. Do I add the four? The four to ten, make a ten. I had three. I had three. Also. I know, right, Buffer? I'm. Ha he says I'm having some off sessions. The the Grim Streamer. Hey, did you notice I added like a little uh, a little woodcut Grim Reaper on there? I know people live in the end. I could have killed them. Come on now, Buffer. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> I definitely could have died. I could have killed them. But what's the? And, you know, I tried. I was going to go after that wagon. String them along and then kill them as we get further into the uh, Make adventure. Make the torture long and slow. Right? Can't kill Barsh. Yeah, you can't. I, oh, is that a, is that a, is that a challenge? That's a challenge. <laughs> roll a d10. If you roll over your corruption, your current corruption, you gain one rank towards order. Otherwise, if you roll under, you gain one rank towards chaos. Now, yeah. it, once you do that, does that little put it back down to zero? Puts it back down to zero till next session. So you guys are all getting order. So we uh, all get a point of order. Well, I'm max. No, Ruby, Ruby went to. Uh, I should have probably rolled uh, twice, right? Once for the six, and then again for the four. Yeah, yeah. Roll twice if you had six. If it's left over, on is when you get it. Exactly, Jen. Is always next time. Is always next time. If you roll over. 
Uh, you get an, a point of order, and if you roll under, you get a point of chaos. Okay. Uh, okay, and what happens when you fill your order up all the way? That's you get a fate is. point. Nice. Sweet. Fate right. is your not die slash not get an injury. It's your get out of jail free, save my life card. <laughs> and what about the other way down. around? <laughs> other way around, you start to gain mutations and become less and less human. And cool. It's not. It's not. I'm good. going for that one. <laughs> How much XP there, Matt? How much XP? I'll figure that out afterwards and and hit you, you guys better not forget. in the chat. The X, the XP. Yeah, I'll throw you guys that afterwards. Grow feathers. Yeah, there you go. Jen says grow feathers. Grow tentacle fingers and feathers and yeah, third eye and all kinds of funny stuff. I forgot about the whole monster thing. Yeah, all right, right. Some of you wanted to go in that direction. It's starting to come Edmund, back to me now. Edmund, what? All you got to do is get get some more. Uh... Grandfather Nurgle stuff in here, and I'll, I'll uh-huh. work towards yeah. it. Yeah, you Puppet just gotta nerd. start, start, start kicking puppies and like beating up innocents and yeah, more, more gluttonous. Be... That's right? not not hard for my character to do is beat up innocents. Right, do that. Edmund, you're uh, welcome to a bite of my arm. Nom nom. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. For so me, that brings it's us normal. to the close. For you, it's cannibalism. We'll be back next week, Sunday, with the next part of this adventure, because we're going to play it throughout October, given that it is the month of Halloween. We're doing something spooky all month. Uh, Tuesday night, we're going to do, keeping with the Halloween theme, Tuesday night, we're going to do um, Tiny Supers, which isn't very Halloweenish, but we're going to do a Halloween adventure on Tuesday night. Uh, it could be one or two parts. Hey, people dress as superheroes all the time. At Halloween, right? right? But this is a specific Halloween-themed adventure. And then uh, Friday, I don't know. What are we doing on Friday? Hanging out, playing some no, Zweihander. We're doing Zweihander oh, again. Yeah. Oh, you are? We have to Zweihander. do character generation. New characters, and uh, we're going to do a one-shot and some more Zweihander. What time? Uh, what time do you make it? Um, It's like 11. It's got to be after like 11. So like 9 p.m. I would play if I no. was in town. I'm not going to be in town, but I would, I would come for that. 10, 10 my time 10 p.m central nine year time which is what we normally play it i tried bumping it up but apparently it didn't go well i've tried bumping up by so, an hour. yeah so 10 p.m central on friday then does that mean gn is in yeah we'll be rolling think... characters online and constance is going to play too so that's going to be yeah, cool constance. I'm excited. evan was going to sit in oaks there I think I, I I, i'm gonna i'll be out otherwise i'd love like to so. join well it's, it's yeah it's my savage worlds game ends i think I want to say it ends at 11. At 11 uh, Eastern? Three, yeah. Four. So you would oh, basically just got, have to jump right over. We got a spot. I got one spot for you if I want to do five because I've got what? I've got Lee and Constance is two. I've got Oak. I've got Evan. That leaves one spot for my five spot overlay. Uh, can I let you know in the morning? I'm going to message Yeah, yeah. Let me know in the morning. We'll roll a new character. We're going to do a run shot. And I'm thinking it may lead into something long term. Stay tuned for announcements. Ooh. Long term? Spoiler alert. Campaign? It possibly will. <laughs> Most I'm likely excited. will. So if you want in and you want to play a long term Zweihander campaign, Friday night's coming up. I'm so excited. Well, if it's the one I'm thinking of, you know, my spot is locked. Yeah, no, it's I, not. I know. Uh, I know you're. I you know. specifically are not going to be able to play, and you have okay. to watch. <laughs> I've been talking about possibly been talking about this for quite some time. So, uh, yes, thank you everybody who joined us Tuesday night, Tiny Supers, Friday, Zvihanda, and uh, next week Sunday we'll be back with this. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank hey, you, guys. Sean Van Dam. This is his adventure that we're playing through. Also, so thank you for providing that to us. And everybody, check it out. The first part is available on Drive Through RPG. It is titled Quoteth the Raven. Check out the adventure. Pick it up. It's going to be five parts. He's doing a new part every week. He's hitting drive through RPG. I think the second part is up there right now. So, Very cool. Have a good night, everybody. Hey, it's a great time for me.